Uh, am I on? Hello. Yes, your your answer. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, you know, this is uh, this is a case of uh, advanced uh, uh, subluxation that uh, presented to me, and uh, if you notice uh, that uh, cataract is literally hanging on few uh, zodules there, and it's a very advanced cataract. So it certainly requires a, a lot of planning. And the one thing that's in your favor in such case is that there's no vitreous in the anterior chamber. And uh, now when you make your rexes, at times it's difficult to make and you may have to use uh, the hooks to support for counter pressure. But luckily, after injecting a dispersive scholastic, uh, very gradual, I could make one. But if you notice, the capsule is so firmly stuck on the nucleus that it's difficult to get a gap between. The hydrodissection, of course, you cannot do, but to get your hooks in, because the only savior for you at this moment would be to fix the bag. And at times, you may have to use more than four hooks like in this case, and those hooks really do an excellent job. Ideally, you would go for a capsular hook, but uh, I prefer to use this hook. Now, the second job ne next, uh, you know, the obstacle here is because the nucleus is extremely hard. You have to see that you, you can separate your endonucleus from the epinucleus wherever it's possible and try and get the nuclear fragments out of the bag to engage them and emulsify them. And you have to also keep injecting viscoelastic into the bag to protect your posterior capsule. You inflate the bag and this process, you may have to do more than once. And I'm using my bevel down to pick a nucleus piece and bring it anteriorly. And with patience and with repeated adjustments of your FACO dynamics, finally, you're able to get most of it. Even at this stage, it's, it's safer to inject some more viscoelastic so that you have your final piece out. And then obviously you would clean the bag. And the first next step that you do is to insert a endocapsular ring because you want a pressure on the bag which is circumferentially uh, equal. The only difference is that I, in, I uh, insert a suture into the trailing eyelet, which works like a safety suture, which is available to you to bail out the endocapsular ring in case the bag has to be salvaged. Now, what I plan here is to fix the bag and there are several ways to fix the bag. And what I use here is anchor, which is called Asia anchor. This is like a paper clip. It's in one plane and it's quite sleek in a sense. Once you put it onto the rexis margin, it just slips in and the pupil or the iris can slide over it without any difficulty. What I'm doing here is that zigzag technique of suturing where that nino suture has one straight needle and at the other end, you have a curved needle. So you fix the suture on either side, the Asia anchors are fixed your bag is stable. And then in an inflated bag, you insert your lens 
and be careful when you have to put in the trailing haptic and once it is done uh, you have the the lens placed well in the center and uh, that's uh, uh, that's about it uh, i thought of showing two cases the other one is a short one and this is very interesting it was to begin with a shallow anterior chamber there was lot of positive pressure and the nucleus was quite hard and this patient was going for a toric lens so i was very sure that i didn't want to disturb the posterior capsule at any cost after repeated changing of parameters it was difficult for me to continue with because i could literally see the posterior capsule literally you know jumping into my phaco tip so at some stage i had to take a call and i thought why not you know do something else where my phaco is little more comfortable than the way i'm doing at this stage so i just thought of scaffolding it i waited i had to make sure that the pc is intact and once i knew that i stopped the phaco got the nucleus out into the cha anterior chamber and injected viscoelastic under the nucleus making sure that the capsular bag was intact and took the single piece toric lens and inserted it into the sulcus once the lens was there to protect to protect it was like it was like one like on your arm on ground i could easily go ahead go ahead and complete the phaco and once the phaco is completed now is the time for you to get the lens into the sulcus and get it in place in the proper axis that you really want that lens to be now this was a very simple step which we normally use when you have a pc rupture but in this case because of positive pressure i adopted the same for an intact pc